Almost three years after release, new things are still being discovered about the Model 3. It turns out that the Model 3, and most likely because of this, the Model Y have DC to AC inverters already built into the cars. So let's talk about why this is huge news. It can save Tesla owners money, make Tesla a little money, and also benefit the power companies. And if you do end up liking this video, please hit like and get subscribed. An engineer named Marco Gaxiola has talked to Electric and told them about some things he found while reverse engineering the Model 3 for a Tesla competitor. He found that the Model 3 and most likely the Model Y are ready for bi-directional charging. This means that not only can power flow into your car by AC to DC conversion to charge the batteries, the car is also capable of DC to AC conversion, which is huge because it means the car is ready to power your house. Marco found that there are three redundant converters for this DC to AC conversion just for some redundancy in case something fails. Now this isn't a completely new concept that Tesla has come up with by themselves. There is the idea of vehicle to grid charging where you can use the vehicle to send energy back into the grid. This way electric cars with their really big batteries, especially on Teslas, can be used just like the Tesla Powerwall or the Tesla power plant that they're using in Australia. The car's batteries can be used to store energy during low and off peak times, and then that energy can be used to support the grid during on or high peak times. This is great news pretty much for everybody, because in both directions, the power company is always trying to balance how much electricity they're producing with how much is being consumed. They can't make too much because they need somewhere to put it. Traditionally, these electric companies don't have much in the way of storage, so when demand goes up really high, really fast, Fast, these energy companies are scrambling to make more energy and then as the day goes on and less energy is consumed they have to bring down that capacity and not produce so much. If Tesla really was to enable this it could be an opt-in feature for owners to actually charge up your car during the off-peak times paying a really low rate or maybe even if you're in this program you pay nothing and then during the on-peak times when there's a lot of demand for electricity you would be paid for giving your electricity back at a much higher rate. So you'd most likely pay a small amount of electricity during those off-peak times and the power company would pay you even more than you paid for the electricity to take it back during the on-peak times. This could be seen in the form of a credit on your bill, or in some states I know if you have an overproduction of electricity from a solar system or something, the state will actually send you a check at the end of the year for the excess electricity that you produce. Now for me, I actually did just install a solar system at my house. It's not even up yet because it still needs to be inspected. If you want more info about that, check out this video here. I am really excited to get this thing up and running, but I didn't buy a Tesla Powerwall because they're a bit expensive and they don't really have a return on investment, or if they do, it takes many, many years. And if this gets enabled, that would just be so amazing to be able to use that huge battery pack in my car. I mean, we could power our house for days without solar even, if we were able to access the energy in that battery pack. Tesla's Powerwall even has a feature called Stormwatch, where if a storm is coming in, the battery will automatically fill itself up, ready for a power outage in case your power goes out. Now, unfortunately, it's not just as simple as letting the electricity flow back into your house if the power goes off. Let's say the power goes out, your car is home, plugged in, it's charged up to 90%, the car detects the power is out, it can't just send that electricity into your house because at that point you're still connected to the grid. If somebody from the electric company comes by and goes to work on that line, even though the power's out, it would be a live wire because you'd be sending energy into the grid from your house. So you need some type of disconnect system if you have a generator, like a whole home generator on your house. There's usually a switch that you have to flip over so that you'll connect your generator and at the same time you disconnect from the grid so there's no possible way you can be connected to the grid while running your generator that keeps you safe, your house safe, and all the electrical workers who are trying to fix the power safe. Now Tesla does have some sort of gateway management for their power wall, so perhaps this would be some type of hardware upgrade you'd need for your home to enable this to work. Other speculation is that Tesla did just update the wall charger for their cars, and it didn't seem like much of an upgrade. It was almost a side grade where the available cable lengths were worse, um, the charging speed was either the same or reduced, it wasn't any better, but these modules did include Wi-Fi, which could really come into play here. If that wall charger could communicate with your power company, your home, and Tesla, it could be used to automatically manage the peak and off-peak times to move electricity back and forth, paying Tesla a little bit for enabling that ability for the power company, paying the owner of the car, and also the power company gets that benefit of unloading their off-peak energy and having an extra resource for their on-peak energy. I know where we live, we do lose power occasionally. Michigan's a little bit known for that. And it's really annoying, especially knowing I have that gigantic battery just sitting there full of energy, nothing I can do with it. 
But another negative to this is it will add cycles to your battery. So cars are traditionally, of course, measured in miles. You look at the miles driven and that's how you can compare, oh, I'm gonna pay less for this car, it has more miles or vice versa. Well, in a Tesla, you really would wanna look at something like battery cycles. And that is a function of miles, pretty much. If you are driving more, you're using the battery more often. And so that can be correlated. But with a feature like this, especially if you're using that ability to buy the cheap electricity and sell the expensive electricity, you're gonna be going through a lot more battery cycles without adding anything to the miles. And I'm sure Tesla has logs of that for warranty purposes if they want to change up their warranty and put it more on cycles rather than miles for the car. But buying a used Tesla, uh, you're not going to know unless Tesla makes that info public or somehow accessible to car owners. You would have no idea how much this battery was used for cycling. So it could make used Teslas a little less desirable. The good news though is that Tesla batteries have been shown to have very minimal degradation. They have about a 5% fall off near the first year or so. And after that, they really don't lose much capacity. I know I'm well over a year now. I'm at 33,000 miles or so. I have a few less miles than when I first got the car, but you know, the miles go up and down. And so I really don't pay all that much attention to it anymore. So I know I personally would use this feature all the time, especially since we just got home solar. Another potential problem for Tesla with this is free supercharging. I know I personally have a lot of free supercharging miles from referrals. A lot of people have a lot of free supercharging miles. So what would be to stop me from going to a supercharger, getting all that electricity for free, bringing it home and powering my house. For me personally, it'd be kind of a pain because I don't have a very close supercharger, but there are plenty of people that this would be a viable strategy. And then Tesla's paying a lot of money to power everybody's homes. This is not the first time that Tesla or Elon Musk has talked about this ability. Back in July of 2018, Elon Musk talked about revisiting this idea, uh, but of course nothing came of that. There are also two other huge things that play into this. Number one, the Cybertruck is coming within one to two years and it's already known. The Cybertruck has a NEMA 1450 outlet on it and this would allow the vehicle to use its battery to charge other things and to even power a house. Like a lot of Tesla owners, I have a NEMA 1450 outlet in my garage. There's really nothing stopping me from plugging that outlet into my house and powering my house straight from the Cybertruck. On top of that, battery day has already been delayed. Tesla is going to have a battery day, just like their autonomy day, where they talk about all the advancements in their battery tech, all the exciting things coming up. Their million mile battery is rumored to be announced at that time. And so that may be a good venue to talk more about this. It doesn't mean it's happening, but it could give us some info to let us know why Tesla has this ability physically on the cars, pretty much just waiting for a software switch to be flipped. So if your car had the ability to buy cheap energy and sell expensive energy or buy cheap energy and power your house while electricity was expensive, would you use it and risk the possible degradation on your battery? Let me know down in the comments below. This video is sponsored by the Model 3 Part Shop. You can use the code Dirty Tesla to get 15% off anything site-wide. Link is in the description. So let me know what you think of all this. I'm curious if you guys would use your battery cycles to save a little bit of money on electricity. Do you think this is a good idea for Tesla? Do you think they're gonna be announcing this at battery day? Um, or we'll need a new battery in our cars. Is my car, a 2018 Model 3, gonna be able to do this? Or will it only be newer models? This is really exciting news for me, again, especially because of that solar we just got. I would be able to use my car and have electricity from the solar and my car when the power's out. I mean, that would just make our lives here so much better. But anyway, I look forward to talking to you down in the comments and you will see me in the next video. Seriously, I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and if like half the people watching my videos would subscribe, I'd be there in a couple months. So I'd really appreciate it. So Autopilot and I are happily driving along.